Owning a hotel in a stunning natural location sounds like a dream come true, doesn't it? Unfortunately, not for the Lakeview Hotel. Sure, it has lake views, but that's about all it has going for it. The owners were real tyrants who refused everything and didn't even believe fresh food existed, making it one of Ramsey's biggest challenges. For Chef Ramsey, this isn't a business trip. It's more like a mission in crisis management. So did Ramsey's combo of financial guidance and a touch of therapy make a difference? Was it enough to keep the hotel afloat? Did its owners embrace the changes and find success? What happened after the episode aired? Is the hotel even still operating? We will look at all of those and more today, so stay tuned. Our journey starts in Chelan, a charming town in Washington State. Surrounded by the best of nature, lakes, forests, and the towering Cascade Mountains, it seems like the perfect location for a hotel. You'd think so, right? But the adults-only Lakeview Hotel and its restaurant, BC McDonald's, have definitely seen better days. It's a far cry from booming business. Meet the owners, Brent and Afni McDonald. They've been in the hospitality sector for over 15 years, but lately, they're struggling. We're talking about a downward spiral, with losses estimated at $30,000 per month. Brent is quick to blame the area's wildfires for the hotel's poor performance. But the staff has a different opinion. According to them, it's the owners themselves who are the problem. And let's just say, Brent and Afni aren't getting any customer service awards anytime soon. Their approach has led to many one-time visitors, with very few returning for a second stay. I'm the best employer in town. Denial, check. And when he's not disrespecting his staff, Brent is making crude sexual jokes and innuendos towards his female staff that only cause discomfort. Go there and do a little dance. Come on. I know you used to pole dance. Get your ass out there. What a dirtbag. It's not just the things he says, but the things he does. This is Friday night. Friday night. Yuck. Not what I want to see or hear when I work. Despite all that, he seems to think quite highly of himself. I think I got a great management style. Giant ego, check. Still, the McDonald's admit they're in financial straits, having invested their life savings in the hotel and barely turned a profit in that time. Time to call Chef Ramsay. But when Gordon arrives, he's kept waiting for valet parking, even though no one comes out to meet him. Upon telling that situation to the owners, Brent explains that they don't have valet service available during that season, though he offers to park Ramsey's car for him. Gordon just ignores him, and soon discovers dust and cobwebs all over the roof. Ramsey throws his jacket up to get some of the cobwebs down. Now you've made everything dusty down here. I've made it dusty. No, you haven't cleaned it. Notice how Brent tries blaming Gordon for the dust? That is a telltale sign of things to come. Ramsey has no choice but to clean up after himself since the owners are used to so much dirt. Gordon has done countless things when he arrives at places, but he's never cleaned up right at the start. You've got a great eye. Yeah. Or they never notice the dust. Great. The hotel also has an ice cream parlor with over 40 flavors, but they don't currently offer free sample because Brent finds it too tedious to give many customers free samples when they are busy. Wow, no wonder the ice cream parlor looks abandoned. So Ramsey can't resist continuing to stir the dust off the fans, and notes that the dust is right above where the ice cream is stored, which would be pretty disgusting to get dust in your ice cream. Ramsey then asks why the hotel was closed recently, in which Brent replies that he was on vacation in Mexico for three weeks. However, when Ramsey asks Afni how she enjoyed the holiday, she confesses she only got to go for one week. Brent was there by himself for the first week, and then after that, Afni and his daughter came to meet him. Hmm, what do you suppose he was doing in Mexico for a week all by himself? I wonder. After that, Brent takes him to the best room in the hotel. For people that haven't been laid for a while quite Please, Brent, show some decency. The room as such is not bad. However, it's full of dust and doesn't even have a remote control for the air conditioner. 
the filter of which is only washed twice a year. I consider that a crime. Later, Ramsey goes downstairs to test the quality of the restaurant. But not only do they not offer local food, but despite being in Washington State, home of many great vineyards, they do not have any local wines on the menu. This is crazy. They use imported wines from New Zealand and elsewhere despite having access to loads of local varieties at home. BC soon to be famous. Teriyaki steak. What the fuck does that mean? Soon to be famous? Right. That has Brent's ego written all over it. As for the dining, Ramsay has no choice but to improvise with his order. But he is sorely disappointed with the first dish, the minestrone soup that is frozen. Next comes the bacon burger. It is overcooked, bland, and tastes frozen. As for the turkey melt, it comes with a broth so salty it puts Gordon's cardiovascular system on alert. The last hope lies in the teriyaki burger, the so-called soon-to-be-famous one. It's about to be famous to send me to the bathroom. Gordon always has the perfect punchline. After that disappointing experience, Ramsey looks for online reviews of the restaurant, something he should have done from the beginning. The reviews are pretty bad, calling the food overpriced for its lousy quality and the owners as rude tyrants. Although Gordon is especially outraged that it's a hotel that doesn't welcome children, when the McDonald's themselves have a teenage daughter who would not be able to go. Brent insists on an adults-only policy for the bar and hotel sections. Kids are allowed in the ice cream parlor and the restaurant, though. The waitress who is serving Gordon, Shelly, tries to maintain a respectful opinion about her bosses, since she's only been working there for a month, but ends up confirming that all the rumors about them are true. Finally, Gordon summons the McDonald's and staff to criticize their food, which was advertised as fresh when it was frozen. Plus, there is nothing local on the menu, not even wine. Brent has a pretty clear opinion on that, which is that he's not going to support local vineyards because they're competitors, claiming that they all have their own restaurants they are affiliated with. Hmm, or could it be because that requires forming relations with the locals? Something the McDonald's don't seem to care too much for. Ramsey can't believe the owners are so arrogant and blind, so he meets privately with Teddy, the hotel manager, to get the truth of the matter. To his dismay, there is no secret. The McDonald's actually believe they are doing it right, and it is a privilege to work for them. At dinner service, Ramsey decides to expose Brent in front of some diners, revealing to them that the burger they just ordered and thought was fresh was actually frozen. Brent then tries rationalizing it away by saying that the burgers are brought in frozen and then they are thawed out. So, hence, according to him, that makes them fresh burgers. As Brent was still in denial, Gordon brought a tray of burgers from the kitchen out to the dining area to show the diners how frozen they are. Despite that, Brent tries to explain that thawing them counts as fresh. Ramsey can't believe it. And then, Brent says perhaps the stupidest thing I have ever heard on any of Gordon Ramsay's shows before. There's no such thing as a fresh burger. We, we cannot get fresh. There's no fresh. You find me the burger. What the heck is he talking about? This guy is seriously getting on my nerves. As a final move, Ramsay orders a fresh burger from the place just across the street to prove to Brent that a fresh burger is indeed a thing and can be found locally. Also, Ramsey learns that Brent fired his son because he had an alcohol problem, so he tells him that his brother is a drug addict but never gave up on him. Still, even that argument didn't get Brent out of his denial bubble. So Gordon had to resort to another plan, calling the guests and the owners to show them with ultraviolet lights that the sheets and pillows had stains of blood, sweat, and other bodily fluids on them. Despite this, the McDonald's claims that the sheets were washed a week ago. Stop just for once today! Fucking lying! Someone had to tell them. Ramsey then asked the owners if they would sleep with those pillows. And of course, they refuse. Though they don't properly apologize to the customers either. Instead of facing the situation, Brent decides to flee, but Ramsey refuses to give up on him. He then speaks privately with Afni, 
who slowly begins to open up emotionally and confesses to him that Brent is still suffering for his son. Unfortunately, despite doing everything they could, Ramsey's team was unable to contact Brent's son. Now, the only one who can confront Brent is Ramsey himself. At that point, Brent explains to him that his relationship with his son declined since his mother got married on the same day she divorced him. In addition, he was not invited to his other daughter's wedding. He didn't even know she was getting married. Finally, he even has grandchildren whom he has never met before. Even though Brent was breaking down emotionally, Gordon motivates him to move past anger and resentment to reconcile with his son. At this point, the episode gives hope that perhaps Brent might be able to change. Let's see if he does. Back to the problems at the hotel. Gordon rallies a bunch of the locals to show the McDonald's what their reputation in the community is actually like. Gordon even learns that a waiter working at the restaurant saw Afni throw food away, but when the customer asked for it back, Afni didn't hesitate to take it out of the trash to give it back to him. They also complain about the lack of samples at the ice cream shop. But the general opinion is that the McDonald's built a wall around themselves, and they refused to support the community, even with the recent wildfires in the area. Everybody in the community helped out after that tragedy, except for them, according to the locals. Ramsey then decides to call Brent and Afni. Surprisingly, the McDonald's didn't even try to defend themselves. They just admitted that they had been too arrogant, and from now on, they want to be active members of the community. Thanks to that, Gordon's team can get to work on remodeling the Lakeview Hotel, with special emphasis on the ice cream parlor. Although it was a difficult task, the result is a completely modern ice cream parlor, with different tastes for everyone of all ages. On the beverage side, Ramsey invited local sommelier, Dave Foss, to create a menu of Washington State wines for the restaurant, as well as dishes with fresh local ingredients. At this point, we see Brent and Afni beginning to welcome diners again, treating them with respect and kindness. As for the adults-only rule, Brent says no, as he is still reluctant to allow children in the hotel and bar area, believing they only cry, make a mess, and cause chaos. Although he promises he will think about it. At the end of the relaunch, Gordon's time comes to say goodbye. There's an amazing guy underneath all those layers. Aww. He may have been one of the most arrogant owners on the show, but Brent didn't seem like an idiot. I'm sure they could be successful if they implement Chef Ramsay's ideas. And that is exactly what happened. Brent and Afni listened to Gordon and immediately began to follow the plan he laid out. Brent and Afni now listen and respect their staff members. They've formed close relations with several of the local wineries, which customers really enjoy. They fixed up the hotel, Brent finally relented and even allowed children in. The place even became the go-to place in town for a fresh, delicious hamburger. Debts are paid off and they are actually making money. Brent rekindled with his estranged children and even got to meet his other grandchildren for the first time. Heck, he hasn't even been back to Mexico since. <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. None of that happened. In reality, at the end of the episode, it is revealed after Gordon's visit Brent went right back to his old destructive habits and alienated himself from the community once again. In addition, the McDonald's cleared house by firing a bunch of the employees, and those who stayed on ended up mostly quitting in the long run because of his poor manners. So what happened to the Lakeview Hotel? Were the reviews of the place really that bad? Well, worse than you think because on Yelp, the Lakeview Hotel has a 2.4 star rating. And while some Yelpers enjoy their stay, most agree that the service was the worst. Many were overcharged on their credit cards for leaving the room slightly dirty, even though that is the hotel's responsibility. And some guests even received a text message direct from the owners, accusing them of being pigs for leaving the room in that condition. Unbelievable. And it seems Brent continued his dislike of children for when one family came to dinner, he yelled at their young son so bad he made him cry. The only good thing is that the ice cream shop continued to operate, but in part that generated some controversy because the workers did not wear masks during the pandemic. Perhaps partially due to the pandemic, 
The situation became so bad for Brent and Afni that they decided to sell the hotel. Sadly, the hotel closed its doors in the summer of 2021, five years after the show. The reasons why they closed remain unknown, but all indications are that their reputation fell so low they had to sell the property. In that summer of 2021, the new owners converted the place into The Landing, which as of today enjoys 3.7 stars on Yelp, although most reviews are positive. The new owners did a bit of remodeling to the hotel from the looks of it. Looking at The Landing's menu, they have decided to feature fresh burgers made from scratch. So I guess you can get fresh burgers after all. Interestingly, they have kept the teriyaki burger, although they don't claim it will be soon to be famous. I wonder if Brent is disappointed. As for what happened to the McDonald's, there is not too much information about them online. There is a 2016 article from the Yakima Herald, just before the episode aired. In that interview, Brent and Afni made it clear the hotel hell experience was more grueling than they thought it would be, and that they didn't get paid enough to close their hotel for those days. Brent confessed that they overplayed the dramatic part. I threw my wife under the bus, Brent said. I know I'm going to be painted as a bad guy. He also removed most of Ramsey's changes, including the menu, as the new dishes were not selling, according to him. They decided to rename their restaurant the Cock and Bull, with a focus on chicken and beef. Gordon doesn't understand this area, Afni said, but of course in the show, he is always right. However, the harshest criticism is that Brent claims Gordon Ramsay and his teams planted the stains on the bedsheets that were showed to the guests under the blue lights. You know what's real about a reality show? Nothing, Brent said. The only other update I could find online from the McDonald's was in 2018, celebrating their daughter's acceptance to the University of Seattle. She was the one who you recall was mentioned as being too young to come to the hotel as she was just a child then. She ended up playing for the University of Volleyball team from 2018 to 2022. Her profile lists that she is six foot two, so she obviously gets the height from her father. It also says that she speaks Indonesian fluently, her mother's native tongue. As for what Brent and Afton are up to today, I couldn't find anything on them and they don't appear to be active on social media. But wherever the McDonald's are, I hope they are doing well and that Brent has reconciled with his family. And always remember, there's no such thing as a fresh hamburger.